G'day friends, welcome to video 8 in the stamp series. Now there are only uh, this video and two more left and we're going to use these two sets, the Decora and the Charm Dame Shaw, interchangeably. So uh, it, it wasn't enough just to say like, oh decorate your page with the Decora set. I wanted to show you some, uh, uh, some different ways that you could or let's look at specific um, pieces to create and today I've got a really fun one um, that I was thinking about ages ago and then before I knew it, it popped up in the Facebook group. So uh, this is totally in inspired by Jenny B 29 I'm gonna put the Instagram handle on the screen right here because uh, she was doing this kaleidoscope kind of a stamping technique and I thought uh, when I was putting it together I thought of stamp Dala like a mandala but with stamping and then before I knew it she put it up on the Facebook group and I was like that is it that's exactly what I was looking for um, so we'll call it either we'll call it kaleido stamping or stamp Dala but um, we're basically gonna use uh, this Alice stamp right in here because it's a circle and everything's gonna radiate out from the circle and then we're going to use some decor pieces just to create the um, the, uh, the the page basically so I'm going to do it on quite a big piece of paper today just to show you the full effect of it I'm using VersaFine black ink it's the onyx black and the first thing I want to do is put on my Alice stamp just so I've got somewhere to work off of so I want to try and get this right in the center of the page. This would probably work better with a square and you could grid this out, but I'm not trying to be too particular about it because I think it's fine just to uh, wing it. <laughs> I'm using Strathmore watercolor paper. It is slightly textured, but you know, that just wasn't a good stamp impression for me. Sorry about that, but we're not going back today. <laughs> we're going to power through it because I'm kind of nervous. It involves a lot of not measuring, I would say, but there's a lot involved in this. So I don't want to have to uh, go back a billion times. Now I've got this circle stencil here. You could use a protractor if you want and, um, and just a lead pencil so we can erase it afterwards. But I actually want to make some concentric circles going around uh, the image that we've first stamped. Now this could work with kind of anything as your base image, but you want to radiate everything from the center point. So I'm just going to use these concentric circles and, um, and just place them one outside of the other. So I've got some reference point to stamp from. Like I said, if you've got a protractor, you could just do it that way, or you could just freehand it. Honestly, this might just be better to freehand, <laughs> but I'm gonna use these guides today and hopefully they erase pretty easily. Now I'm probably gonna get inky because I don't like to clean my stamps and I don't like to uh, fuss about, so <laughs> sorry in advance for that. Let's start with something, uh, just kind of bold because I'm feeling good. I'm going to ink up this little crown from the Decora set and all I want to do is start on that first circle. I want to put one going out this way. I want to put one going out the bottom. One off the side. Essentially you could create your own coloring book page with this. Um, and obviously the, the combination of what you choose and where you put it and how many times you put it will make it completely your own. And uh, I guess no two would really be the same, like a snowflake kind of. I want to put something else a little long as well. So I'm going to use the diamond and I'm going to put that halfway between where we put those crowns. I'm trying to be neat and avoiding the ink everywhere, but I just know it's going to get messy. <laughs> this is probably one of those things that you really just want to, um, let go of all your expectations for because not every stamp impression unless you're an expert stamper is going to be super crisp and clear um, That's just if you're me, I guess, but um, unless you're an expert uh, you <laughs> You could get right to the end and have one stamp impression that didn't look so great And you're just gonna have to try and live with that unless you want to start it again, but I really don't think you need to it's not that serious um, I've got the really little um, sprout stamp here now I'm going to move to my second circle and place it in between the diamond and the crown. I'm going to place it in every uh, spot between the diamond and the crown, but I'm going to go on that second tier. I've got the bigger love heart here, and now I want to take this love heart and I think I want to try and place it between the sprout leaves. So I'm not using the circle this time. Oh, fantastic impression. <laughs> I'm not using the sprout leaves this time. I'm just going to, uh, sorry, I'm not using the circles. I'm gonna take my guide from the sprout. I'm gonna try and remember to press the, stop at the top of the stamp so I get a good impression. You could change your ink pad up in between if you had the patience to do that and get like 
a rainbow effect stemming from the middle, like use a red ink for the first layer and orange ink for the second. I actually don't own a lot of inks, so I couldn't even try that if I wanted to. I know some people have been out there coloring uh, their stamps with Tombow markers. I will say that as long as it's a water-based, I don't think you'll have a problem, but if you're starting to put alcohol-based markers on these, it might start to corrode the uh, photopolymer, so I would just steer clear of alcohol-based markers and just use the water base if that's something you're interested in. I've got the unicorn horn here, and I think I want to stamp this upside down on with the tip touching the, um, the diamonds. So you can see that you actually don't need all the circles there. I would just have a couple just so you know where to get started and then you can use your actual stamped images as the guide for where you want to place your next piece. I've got the little rose here and I think I want to stamp the rose on the top of every crown. I also see a little gap underneath these uh, little sprouts so I think I'm going to put some roses on those as well. So we've got an Alice in the middle, right? So she can uh, be painting the roses red. You can do this with any stamp set that you have. I like this decor one because there are a lot of little bits to it. Uh, so you can really vary it up and there are different shapes and sizes and themes. So uh, there's a lot to work with here. But like I said with most, you can do anything you want really. I've got the bigger leaf here. I'm going to put that between the heart and the crown. Look at all my smudgy fingerprints everywhere. I knew I wouldn't be great at that, but <laughs> um, hopefully when I put watercolor on it won't be too bad. This ink does kind of resist watercolor a bit, so uh, that's fun, but who knows. I could just color it in with pencil or marker, or maybe I could just leave it black and white. And now I think for the last touch, I'm going to add this star and put it where the heart and the horn are. Just on, the, uh, on this side of the heart and the horn. Because there's more of a gap there than there is on the other side. Now that looks a little uneven to me, so let me get the other star and see what I can do. Let's put it at the top of that heart like that. What have I done? I think I've either missed something or... <laughs> I really honestly don't know what I did. Okay, so oh, there'll be two stars on some heart and then one heart with the leaf will have it on that side. I get it. For a moment then I completely lost it. Right, that's it. Oh wow, this is starting to look really off. I don't know what it is. I've done something but I can't figure it out. Let's grab the little sprout again and see what we can do. <laughs> I'm just gonna add it until it goes out off the page then I won't have to worry about it. Um, look, let's put this sprout on top of the flower. Okay, I'm going to leave it there because I feel like any more than that and my eyes are just going to start going Siamese cross-eyed. So, uh, that's it. That's your stamp dollar, your kaleidoscope stamping, kaleidoscope stamping, whatever you want to call it. Thank you, Jenny B, again for the boost of inspiration. Come to think of it, I don't know if it was in the Burke Mates Creative Outlet or if it was just on her Instagram. So, I will link the Instagram down below and you can go check that out. I hope it just encourages you to get out some of those stamps that you don't really use a lot and uh, perhaps put them to some good use. You can really fill up a page quickly like this. Uh, if you stamped in a really light ink, maybe you could keep this as a really like watermarked background. That might look nice to journal over. Um, you could just pull out some accents if you want. I'm going to not bother doing that. I just picked up a paintbrush, but I thought, you know what? It just would be, it would be better if I just left it at this point because <laughs> I'm going to start getting the urge to go over everything. You know what? Maybe I'll try. I'm just going to try painting a little bit of a rainbow because I've got the Prima set here. So everyone cross your fingers and hold your breath.
Now you don't need to be an art critic at a national gallery to uh, see that I didn't put a lot into coloring this in. I kind of just let it go and, uh, and had some fun with it, but I feel like it actually turned out quite effective. So obviously if you took more care into and time and consideration into all of this and how you did it, you might want to plan it out a little bit or, uh, or you could just go as nuts as I did. Look, it was a simple, fun little exercise to think about um, in, in a different way to use your stamps and to create possibly a background, possibly uh, some kind of focal element. I don't know if you're making a clock at home and you want to put this as the back of your clock. Um, it's it's circular, so it might work. Um, yeah, I just I wanted to put that out there because I was really inspired when I saw it and I just wanted to uh, put it together in a little bit of a tutorial and let you know that this is a super fun way to use your stamps as well. So I'm not going to show you the close-ups on this because honestly, you've seen me do it and uh, this is the only example I have for you. The other one I did, I got so messy that I actually just threw it away. Um, but yeah, I, you look, I can't wait to see what you guys do with it because it really is just as simple as, um, you know, stamping repeatedly from like this uh, and, and radiating it out. I think it's really fun. And something like this, like it looks like a pride flag just kind of threw up all over my page, but I'm not mad at it. <laughs> All right, so two more tutorials left. We've got one where we're just gonna go through and make a lot of headpieces, and another one where I'm gonna show you how to do a specific uh, piece that I've already created, and we're gonna go through the steps to create that again. So uh, until next time, thanks for watching, bye.